Here is what you will need to make the candy corn backpack modification. Yellow, orange, and white yarn. These are all Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn in the colors yellow, white, and dessert glaze. A pair of scissors, a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. This one is Clover and More brand, which is my favorite brand of hook to work with, and a tapestry needle. So let's get started with this guy. And if you look at a piece of candy corn, it goes white, orange, yellow. And we're gonna start with the white because we're starting at the top of our backpack and working our way down. So this is gonna start exactly like the dinosaur and the shark backpack starts, which is already on my blog. We're gonna make a slip knot. And then we're gonna chain 41. And the first pieces we're gonna make are the little drawstring tunnels for our strap to go through. Okay, after we chain 41, we're going to single crochet back down the chain, but we're gonna be going in the back bump. So if you're looking at your chain and you see the V that it makes, normally you would probably put your hook right there. We are just going to flip our chain over and put our hook right in this little bump on the back of our chain. That's the back bump. We're gonna single crochet all the way down for a total of 40 single crochets in the row. Thirty-nine and 40. After you get your 40 single crochets back down, your starting chain, you're going to chain one and turn your work. For row two, we are just going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way down, again for a total of 40 single crochets. Chain one and turn your work. We're going to do that for a total of nine rows. So you should have nine rows of 40 single crochets total in your little strap tunnels. I just finished my ninth row of 40 single crochets and I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn and tie off. Now we are going to repeat those steps and make another little rectangle and these will be turned into our backpack tunnels and our drawstrings will run through these little tunnels right here. But go ahead and make another one of these and then I will be back. Okay, after I finish my second rectangle, I'm not going to cut off my yarn this time, so I just did nine rows of 40 single crochets, chain one and turn. Now I'm going to chain one and turn after my ninth row, and then close my tunnel up hot dog style. Now I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch on the first row of my rectangle and then the first stitch of the last row of my rectangle and I'm just going to place a single crochet right there under both of those stitches and I'm going to continue lining up all of my stitches all the way down all 40 of them and single crocheting them together to create a tunnel. So under the second single crochet of my first row under the second single crochet of my ninth row and place a single crochet there. That's two. We're going to do this all the way down for a total of 40 single crochets. After you finish your 40 single crochets, you're just going to set this down, come back to your first rectangle, and this is where we ended. So we're just going to pretend like we chain one and then turn our work. That way our two rectangles are facing the same way. And then we're just going to pinch this closed and continue to single crochet these two sides of the rows together. Just like we did with our first rectangle over here. So we don't chain or anything after our 40th single crochet over here. We just pick up our first rectangle and keep going again for 40 single crochets so it will be 80 total at this point after i finish my 40 single crochets or i guess 80 at this point you can see them all nice and attached right here I'm not going to chain or anything after my 80th single crochet. I'm just going to 
Keep, make sure this doesn't get twisted. Like, see how it's not twisted? If it was twisted, it would look like this or like this. That's not what we want. Make sure it's not twisted, seeing the backs of my stitches. Then I'm just going to make my ends join up to each other. And I'm going to join into the top of the first single crochet, just like this was all one row in a round. And chain one. Now we have the beginning of our backpack. We are going to single crochet 80 for the next 14 rows with our white, and we are going to be doing them in the round. So you won't join in chain one after each row, you will just keep going continuously without joining and chaining up for a total of 13 more rows, which will give us 14 total for the white portion on our backpack body because we just did row one. So 13 more rows, giving us 14 total, and then we will switch to orange. So I'm just going to do a couple rows with you guys here on camera, even if I speed it up. So you don't have to watch me do 80 single crochets in real time. But once I get all the way around, back to my first single crochet, I'm just going to put another single crochet in, top, in the top of this one, instead of joining and chaining up. If you do not like working in the round, you are more than welcome to join and chain up your seam will be in the cor like the corner edge of your backpack um, kind of like under your child's arms I went ahead and made a different backpack trying this method with crocheting in the round instead of chaining up and joining after each row and it, it didn't give me a funky um, seam or anything, but I didn't change colors, so we will see how this one turns out. You may notice that I yarn under when I do my single crochets, instead of how you probably yarn over. See how my yarn is going over my hook? I pull my hook over my yarn, <laughs> so my yarn is under, and this gives my single crochets a twisted look. And it kind of makes them a little bit tighter than an, a regular single crochet for tension purposes. If you do a traditional single crochet instead of the twisted like I do, your backpack is still going to be perfect. It just might be a little bit bigger than mine or have a little bit of a different texture. Good thing about backpacks is they don't have to technically fit. So if your gauge is a little different, or if you use a different hook size or a different yarn, you can still follow the same pattern. Your finished backpack might just be a different size. I will put my gauge in the description on the YouTube video and in the blog post that goes with this backpack modification. That way you can check your gauge against mine so at least you know your backpack will be approximately the same size and not like three times too small or three times too big. Okay, we are almost back to the beginning. Let's see. I don't... Okay, that's where I joined. I'm not sure. Let me count back and see where I'm at. Hang on. Okay, so I just finished my 80th single crochet. I did not put one right there in that weird little join in case you were wondering. And I'm just going to go right here into my next single crochet. Well, with my first single crochet in the row. And I'm going to put another single crochet right on top of that. Now I'm going to put a stitch marker right here so I know this is my 80th. So this is the end of my row, and I'm just going to use a piece of scrap yarn. Now I know when I get back to this guy, that's when another row is complete, and then I will move it up every time I get to an 80th single crochet. And then I will do that until I have a total of 14 rows, including this 
row that we did to close our tubes, our tunnels. So this is technically two rows of the body and I'm getting ready to start row three until I have a total of 14 rows still in the round. So I already did one. Coming up on my stitch marker, AKA my 80th single crochet right here. I'm going to put my single crochet where the stitch marker is and then I'm going to stick my hook in the 80th single crochet of row three, grab my stitch marker and pull it through. That's where I will end row four. Now I'm gonna start row four by just keep on a going around and around and around and around until you get 14 rows and I will come back after my 14th row to switch to orange and continue on making this awesome candy corn backpack. Okay, I am on my last stitch in row 14 and that's doing 80 single crochets in the round and moving my stitch marker every time I get to the last stitch. This time I'm gonna be switching to orange in this stitch. So I'm gonna insert my hook, grab my yarn, but instead of yarning over and pulling through, I'm going to drop my white, pick up my orange, and pull through both loops on my hook with the orange yarn instead of the white, then continue going around with my orange yarn just like I did with the, with the white for a total of 19 rows this time. And I will continue to pull my tail up here, marking the last stitch in the round so I know when I get there, I've, I've done a row and then I'll, that way to help me count. To count rows, I just look at my V's, my, well they're twisted V's on mine. Yours would be um, an actual V shape if you don't do a twisted single crochet, but that's where I count my rows. So, and then you count this one down here that you use to join your tunnels. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then 14. So if you need help counting rows, that's how I do it. Now I'm just going to continue around making orange rows for a total of 19, and then we will come back and switch to our yellow yarn. I have one more single crochet left in my orange row, and that will be my 19th row and my 80th single crochet in the row. And this is where I'm going to switch to yellow. So just like last time, insert, pull up a loop, but then let it hang out. Grab your yellow. Then pull through with the yellow. And then go ahead and lift up your stitch marker so you know where your last stitch will be. And now we have 15 rows of yellow. And then the bulk of our backpack will be finished at that point. And I will show you how to close it up and start the straps. You can go ahead and cut your orange yarn now. I forgot to say that with the, yellow, with the white yarn, but once you change to your new color, you can cut the yarn. We won't be going back to, to previous colors. Just make sure you leave the tail long enough for sewing in with the tapestry needle. And we're gonna go all the way around for 80 single crochets in each row and 15 rows of yellow. Okay, I just finished my 15 rows of 80 single crochets in yellow and now the body of my bag is ready and I'm going to take a few measurements for my measurement loving friends. So lengthwise we are looking at right at 12 inches long. That's pretty easy to remember. 
and that's the at the top of my tunnel here and width is nine and a half look at that almost a little bit more than nine and a half nine and nine in this much <laughs> With fat packs, it doesn't have to be super the same because um, it's just a fat pack that doesn't have to fit. But I give you those measurements just so you can at least get an idea of where yours should be versus where mine is and yada yada. So now we are going to close up the bottom of our backpack. But before we do that, we need to be over here. So I'm just going to continue single crocheting a few more stitches until I'm at the corner. I did that for this backpack, which is unfinished. Um, but he's going to be a little pumpkin backpack. And you can't even, like you can't even tell that I did that. So I don't think it makes a difference. Once I get the straps on, I guess I'll know for sure. But it doesn't look like it makes a difference. So we're just going to single crochet a few more times until we get back over here at this corner. Okay, so for me, it looks like that was 12 stitches to get from where I ended for the row in the round. It makes that weird diagonal to the corner so I can close it up. And now we're going to flip our bag inside out. I'm gonna do this by pushing the top of the bag out the bottom because I need my working yarn to stay accessible. And this way it doesn't get all twisted up. Okay, and now I'm going to go back over here to my corner, make sure my tunnels are on top of each other and at the, like, centered, and then my corners go down the sides of the bag, and then that's lining up perfectly, okay? And now we're going to insert our hook into the stitch we just made, and now we are going to single crochet these together all the way down the row. So I'm gonna go into this very first single crochet where my loop just came out of, and I'm gonna go into this very first single crochet on the other side of it, like the next one over, and I'm going to put a single crochet right there. That's one. And then I'm gonna go in the second one, match it up with the second one on this side, Hope you guys can see that pretty good. And a single crochet. And I'm going to do that all the way down, lining up my two stitches and closing off the bottom of my bag. And it should be 40 single crochets because we should be taking our 80 and splitting it in half. And then I have these two stitches left to be 40, so that's perfect. And then we can tie off with our yellow. While my bag is inside out, I'm going to go ahead and sew in all of these tails. But I'm going to take off my stitch counter right here. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. Since I'm done making my rows, okay, that will slowly just start to go away. Now I'm going to sew in my ends with my tapestry needle that I got from Clover. And I like to just knot mine together first. I don't know why I do this. But I knot them together first. Just It makes me feel like they're extra secure. And then I sew them in. If you don't want to do it this way, you don't have to. You can do whatever way is easier to you. 
or your preferred sewing in method. I will show you a couple tails here on screen and then I will just do the rest off screen so you don't have to watch me sew a bazillion tails in. I'm just going to show you how I do it. Use the tapestry needle. I just take my needle and get in between the fibers of the yarn of the same color of the needle. And make sure to run my needle in all kinds of different directions and then back over itself again. So I know that in between all of the fibers it's getting super knotted up under there and it will not come out. If you are selling or gifting your finished pieces, having a tail pop out might make your customer or gift recipient think their new crocheted thing is falling apart and that would not be fun. And then I'm going to just snip it off. I will go ahead and finish the rest of these off camera and I will be back and we will start making the strap. Now it's time to make the drawstring strap for our candy corn backpack. I have made these straps before by crocheting an I-cord, which is very time consuming and you have to allow for stretch when you make those so you don't make accidentally make them too long because they will stretch with the weight of the backpack. And also I have used rope, cotton rope before, the same kind of stuff that you would use for um, macrame projects. I used four millimeter cotton rope. For the candy corn backpack, I thought I would use a new material, which is this little knitted rope cord type stuff. And this was actually given to me from somebody's scraps. They didn't need it anymore and it looks like it's knitted or maybe it's woven. Um, not very stretchy, but this is what I'm going to use. I thought black would be very Halloween-y and look decent with this backpack. I think my first choice would be probably orange or yellow, but I think the black will look really cool against these three colors. So this is the cord that I'm going to be using. You will also need a pair of scissors and a crochet hook that's not too rubbery on the bottom. Um, this is a little rubbery, but I think it'll still get the job done. A wooden one or a solid metal one would probably be better. Um, also, you want it to be as long as you got because you're gonna be using this to pull your cord through your little tunnel up here at the top of your backpack. I cut my cord to be 60 inches long, which is the same length as my tape measure. And we're gonna be doubling it up for our backpack pulling it to the inside and knotting it. If this if this length is too long, because you're making it for a small child, you can always just pull some extra, move the knot up, and then cut, up, cut it off. And again, if it's too short, um, you can just do more than 60 inches next time. But I find 60 inches is a, a good starting point for backpack straps. So I'm just gonna use my first one to go ahead and measure out my second one. And then we will line these guys up and I will show you how to assemble them. Okay. So the way a drawstring backpack works, you've got one of your 60 inch strings will go in this side, out this side, in this side, and back out this side. So it's gonna go like this. And then your other cord is going to do the same thing, but on the other side. And it's going to go like this underneath those tunnels. And then when you pull these two, it's going to clinch close the top of your drawstring backpack. And both of these ends will be pulled into the inside of our backpack and knotted on the inside where you cannot see it. So let's take one away and start with just the one. I haven't done this yet with this cord and this crochet hook, but it should be the same as the other backpacks that I've made. So I'm going to start by threading my crochet hook through this top tunnel here, grabbing my cord and pulling it out the other side. And you can see me do this with the other two materials as well in the other backpack modifications. Next, I'm going to flip this over and pull it back through this way. 
I'm not sure what that line is that showed up after I made it. Okay. Thread your hook through, and this this little technique here of holding the hook with my, my hand and then pulling down the backpack with my fingers. This this is, I learned this when I made the dinosaur backpack, I think, and it seemed to help hold everything in place. Okay, wrap your cord around your hook and pull it through. We missed it that time, but it's really close. So I think I can grab it with my finger, maybe? Two fingers? Nope. I'm just gonna stick my hook back in there and try to grab it again. There it is. And pull it out, and then grab, and we're just gonna leave these guys hanging out down here for right now. And as you can tell, this is the back of our backpack. It doesn't affect the straps. I just wanted to point that out to you while I was looking at it. Okay, after we pull through our first side, we can do the other side. And it's gonna go in this way and in that way and then back out over here. Grab our cord, hook it around our crochet hook and very carefully pull it through. Ha ha ha! Yes! If you knew how many times that took me to do that that was not on video you would be excited with me that it pulled through on the first try that time <laughs> okay same thing with this side and make sure i got the right cord Okie dokie. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Now, when we pull, it will clench our backpack closed and keep all of our candy in there from trick-or-treating. Okay, now let's adjust our two cords so they're about the same length in there. And now we are going to pull them on the inside of our backpack and I like to just make sure they're in the same row pretty much so I'm gonna go right here and then right here that's where I'm gonna be pulling these two tails in from so that one is gonna go right here and pull it to the inside. This can be a little tricky depending upon your materials. There we go. And then the other one in the same row, about in the same spot. Doesn't have to be perfect. And grab it and pull it through. Okay, do the same thing on the other side. We are almost done. Okay, we are in this row. Boop. and grab our front string. See how this one is on this side and this one is on this side? That's how I chose which string would go in the front and which string would go in the back. Okay, and then same line, similar spot, back hole. And now we can knot these ends. 
this is how I knot mine. Make sure you got the two on the same side and not one from each side. Line up the ends and then just knot them together. Easy peasy. The main thing you want to do is make sure you have about the same amount of this part on both sides. Pull your tails together. So we're going for about an inch. Okay. Put as tight as you can. And then our bags are complete. Here we go. Ta-da! That's the back. Ta-da! And we finished our little candy corn backpacks. Now if you notice that your straps are too long for your little one, you can go back in and make those knots higher up. So you can lower the, the length of these guys. This looks like it would fit a child size just fine, child through adult. Um, toddler, it might be a little long and like go below their little bottoms when they're carrying it. So you might have to shorten the straps for a toddler size. But I really do like the black against the candy corn. It's very Halloween-y. I hope you guys liked this modification of the dinosaur backpack crochet pattern. If you would like to receive some Halloween inspired handmade with love wrap labels, you can go to the link provided in the description below and subscribe to my email list and that will send you an automatic free pack PDF sheet of handmade with love wrap labels and matching thank you cards thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today i can't wait to see all of your candy corn backpacks and i i know you guys are going to get creative with this because this is awfully blank and i know that you guys are going to um, really blow me out of the water with your creativity and i can't wait to see what you do have a great day bye